Well, good morning, and uh, thank you for being here. Um, I would like to introduce the folks that are standing with me today. Uh, I have uh, the chair of the board and 5th Dis District Supervisor, Supervisor Lisa Bartlett, 1st District Supervisor Andrew Doe, 3rd District Supervisor Todd Spitzer, um, the Orange County District Attorney will be joining, Tony Rakakis will be joining us shortly. I have FBI Orange County Office Supervisor, Supervisory Special Agent Eric Mayo and U.S. Marshals Chief Inspector Bert Tapia and two of the primary uh, investigator incident command folks that have been working this from the beginning, Captain Stu Greenberg and Lieutenant Dave Sawyer. Yesterday, Vicki Vargas asked uh, Jeff, Captain Jeff Halleck, uh, is now that we think that these dangerous individuals are up north, can the residents of Orange County uh, reassign a relief? And he said, absolutely not. Well, I can say this morning that the entire state can breathe a sigh of relief because we have the other two dangerous individuals back in custody where they should be. Hossein Nayeri and Jonathan Tu have been captured and were taken into custody this morning by the San Francisco Police Department. At approximately 8.50 this morning, San, Fr San Francisco police officers from the Park District Station were handling an unrelated medical aid call in the area of Haight and Stanyan in the city of San Francisco. A female citizen approached the officers and pointed out a white van parked in the parking lot of the Whole Foods Market located at 690 Stranyan. Officers approached the van as Hossein Nayeri fled the area on foot. A short foot pursuit ensued before Nayeri was taken into custody by officers. Officers immediately returned to the white van and discovered the other escapee, Jonathan Tu, hiding in the van. San Francisco Police Department has confirmed the white van is in fact the same one stolen from Los Angeles that we believed they were driving and possibly living out of. Based on the preliminary investigation and search by San Francisco police officers, a number of 380 ammunition rounds were located in the van. However, no weapon was recovered. Both suspects have been arrested and taken to San Francisco Police Department's Park District Station and will soon be transported to the San Francisco County Jail. Orange County Sheriff's Department investigators are in San Francisco and will be interviewing both suspects in an attempt to gather additional information. We are currently in the process of coordinating with San Francisco Sheriff's Department to coordinate transportation of both Nayiri and Tu back to our custody here in Orange County. We have a lot of people to thank. In addition to the host of Orange County Sheriff's Department personnel, I would like to thank the following law enforcement agencies and partners who have worked with us around the clock to assure all three suspects were taken back into custody. They are the FBI, the U.S. Marshal's Office, the Orange County District Attorney's Office, the Orange County Probation Department, the Anaheim Police Department, Brea Police Department, Buena Park, Cypress, Fowler Police Department, Fountain Valley, Fresno County Sheriff's Department, Fresno Police Department, Fullerton Police Department, Garden Grove Police Department, Irvine, Huntington Beach, LA County Sheriff's Department, Laguna Beach, Newport Beach, Orange County Parole, Orange Police Department, Placentia, San Francisco Police Department, San Jose Police Department, Santa Ana, Tustin, UCI Police Department, Westminster, and the Orange County Board of Supervisors who offered up the $150,000 reward, um, the three of which are standing behind me today. I want to thank the media for
for your continual coverage of this incident. It, this has been a multi-jurisdictional investigation that we knew had potential to span Orange County and possibly state borders. And you stepped up big time by keeping the information out and helping us get the information out that we had uh, during, on, during this ongoing, fast-moving investigation. It was critical that we get that message out. For that, I say thank you for your diligence and attention to this investigation and providing information to the public, vital information that ultimately led to a citizen flagging down San Francisco police officers that triggered successful capture of our remaining two jail escapees. I stood before you from the very beginning and I told you we were gonna capture these individuals. And you might have, might have wondered why I felt so confident to say that. Because what you didn't get to see, what I got to see every day, is in this building behind me, people working night and day from all these agencies that I uh, mentioned just now. Some who would not go home at night to capture these individuals and they have worked every lead, many, many leads over this eight day period. And uh, I am proud to say I have witnessed some fantastic police work and investigation. Um, I would like to offer an opportunity for uh, folks standing here with me to say a few wo uh, words, and then when they are finished, I will take questions, okay? I saw some smiles on that, I will take questions. <laughs> um, okay, so first, I would like to introduce um, ch the chair of the board, Lisa Bartlett. Thank you, Sheriff Hutchins. This is indeed a great day for the state of California. Now that we've got these three criminals back into custody, we can rest assured. I want to personally thank uh, Sheriff Hutchins and all the sheriff's deputies, as well as all the law enforcement agencies that were involved in this multi-jurisdictional, very intense effort for the last week. Um, it, and we also want to thank the, the media. Without the media's attention and putting the information on television and out on the newscasts, we would have been in a, in a world of hurt because we needed to get the information out to the public at large. You helped us do that, and it was very helpful. Thank you. Thank you to the public as well for coming up with the leads, calling into the authorities. Uh, it was everyone's effort that resulted in the capture of these three individuals. They are not lo no longer roaming the streets in our state of California, and we can rest assured now. So thank you for everyone involved in this effort. Supervisor Andrew Doe. My congratulations to Sandra, uh, to Sheriff Sandra Hutchins and the Orange County Sheriff's Department for their leadership in leading the task force and multi-agency task force to investigate and uh, detect and uh, pursue leads and ultimately in the arrest of the uh, escapees uh, in this incident. Uh, representing the first district where two of the individuals have affiliation with gangs in our territory, um, I am happy to see that the public concern um, as to safety uh, with these individuals being at loose um, is now put to rest. And I am appre uh, particularly appreciative of Sheriff Hutchins for her efforts in the last week to reach out to the community at large, especially for the uh, residents of the Little Saigon area. Uh, the, all the work that the Sheriff's Department has done to inform the public and to keep uh, people updated on where we are has assured people of their safety and that has gone a, a long way in helping the community to feel at peace and uh, at ease with the uh, effort that we have put forth in trying to capture these individuals. So once again, I appreciate the work of all of the law enforcement agencies and on behalf of the uh, Board of Supervisors, especially the First District, we are um, happy to be able to participate and have, uh, to help out in the reward money and hopefully uh, the work that all of you have done in the media has really uh, put the information out there and led to the arrest today. Thank you very much. Supervisor Todd Spitzer. Well, this has been a long eight days. Really an unspeakable event happened right behind us, the escape from this jail. And a lot of us in the public arena have spent a lot of time fielding very unfortunate questions attacking law enforcement in this county and questioning law enforcement in this county. None of us from the Board of Supervisors or anybody in the law enforcement community took the bait because the number one concern was bringing these three felons to justice. 
that only occurred through the leadership of law enforcement headed by Sheriff Hutchins. And so as a result, those individuals are back in custody and certainly we're all sighing a huge sigh of relief. But what Sheriff Hutchins said needs to be underscored from those of us who are elected to represent the people of Orange County. She never took her eye off the prize. She and her executive command and all the other law enforcement agencies in this county came together. They stood tall and they worked despite the fact that people were questioning what was going on behind the scenes. We are extremely proud of the law enforcement community in this county. We didn't always know that today would happen so quickly or people would be this successful. This is a successful day. But we never, ever, ever questioned the judgment, the commitment, the honor of law enforcement in this county. And so my heart goes out to, and I'm grateful to Sheriff Hutchins and all the law enforcement community because they never rested and they did the job that they were sworn to do. They protected the public. Thank you. District Attorney Tony Rakakis. Well, I just want to take this opportunity to uh, congratulate the sheriff uh, on uh, on doing uh, tremendous work. This was uh, this was a, as you know, this was a huge undertaking, a coordinated effort amongst uh, all, of course, all of the law enforcement in Orange County, but also a lot of other uh, law enforcement agencies were involved. And the sheriff showed great leadership in the in the way that this uh, whole uh, operation was conducted, and to get these people back into custody. Uh, in in, a, in about a week, uh, without any injury to law enforcement or to any uh, innocent civilians or anybody else for that matter, is uh, is a is a tremendous victory and it, it's just just a great success. So uh, uh, so I again I just congratulate the sheriff and, uh, and law enforcement in Orange County, and uh, on behalf of the district attorney's office, we're we're happy that uh, we had an opportunity to assist in in the effort to the extent that we could to uh, uh, get some people out to uh, be involved in the in the uh, in the surveillance and some of the activities to try to uh, bring these folks back into custody but we're very very uh, glad that uh, that these dangerous people are now back in custody and that we're going to have an opportunity to uh, uh, to bring them to to justice uh, one of them has already had a trial and and that was hung 11 to 1 for guilty. So we're going to, we'll, we'll, of course, we'll retry him, and then, uh, uh, and then this, uh, uh, these uh, horrible, uh, dangerous people who are uh, back in custody. Uh, we will reset those trial dates and uh, and get that done. So thank you very much, and thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. And now for questions. Sheriff, obviously, it's very easy to see the relief on your face after all of this. But obviously this has to just be the first step. Where are you as far as making sure that, you know, this doesn't happen again, reviewing the steps, especially since all three guys are coming back here to the same yep. jail? No, very, uh, very good question. I can tell you um, because they are escape risks, they will be housed in a different uh, area in a different manner, uh, just like we would have anybody who's ever escaped from I any jail. So um, it, we have been looking at the causes of the escape from day one. Certainly our focus was getting these individuals back into custody as quickly as possible, but now the focus shifts uh, to continuing to look at where the system failed us, where uh, policies and procedures were not followed or should have been tighter. And so that will take some time, but believe me, we will, we will be looking top to bottom on that. And uh, uh, I, th m we, should, we do not want another escape from an Orange County jail, I can tell you that. We're going to do everything we can in our power. And it's not enough to say that, that gee, we have an old jail. It's a challenging place. It's got its own challenges based on its design. Uh, we have to look for ways that we can use technology and, and do other procedures that will ensure uh, the security of the jail for the, for the public safety in Orange County. Have you Sheriff, are you uh, surprised that they were captured in the immediate San Francisco area when yesterday you had reason to believe they were on their way to Fresno? 
Um, we, we did have information uh, in involving San Francisco. We certainly believed uh, there was a connection to San Francisco. However, the last information we got was San Jose, and as we said yesterday, also Fresno area. So we did not we did not leave any area open. You know, even though we had information they were in a given area, we continued our investigations in several other areas, including areas in Orange County. What do you know about what they were doing in their movements in Texas? I mean, you, you know, you had really focused kind of heavily on Southern California in the early days that you thought they were here. Then, uh, you know, obviously the focus shifted, but what have you been able to learn about that? Uh, we, they are, as I said, our investigators are up in San Francisco and they will be interviewing the two uh, suspects that were captured uh, this morning, uh, and we had received some information um, from Bak Duong uh, when he turned himself in, uh, and so we will continue to develop that information. So I don't have that timeline right now, but we certainly will at some point. The fact that you found them, it's one follow-up question, the fact that you found them today uh, was because of that, that civilian, not because of anything that Bak Duong did to them, it was because of serendipity, right? Yes. It was absolutely the civilian that spotted that van. And to follow up on that, did the civilian recognize it as the van that people were supposed to look out for? Yes. She's, well, she's, she, I think she said, uh, she told the officers, it looks like the van I've been seeing on the news. So, yes. Yeah. Did the civilian get the 200000 bucks? Well, that's not for me to decide, but I certainly think she deserves it. <laughs> Um, it, yeah, that'll be decided by by others. But I, yeah, I'm, I, I think she is definitely she's eligible for some money. So. And specifically, how are the three inmates' situation? How is it different now in this jail? Can you give specifics on what their cell will be like, or, or how? Each I no, I can't give specifics on that. I can only say, you know, when we classify people as to where they're going to be housed, the fact that they are an escape risk is is in, in put, put into consideration. So. I, I can't comment on that right now. Um, I do not at this time. I do not know that. Sheriff, is there a sense that everyone involved in this possible escape is, is in custody now, including Ravaji, that she's in custody now, that this investigation is pretty much done and there's no one else you need to be looking at? We are not going to close the door to that. We are going to get, interview the two suspects, and we're continuing to interview other people to, to ascertain that. Because if anybody else aided and abetted them, they're going to be prosecuted. I don't have the total. We have a number of individuals who are in custody, some uh, gang members on probation, parole violations. Um, we certainly have our three escapees in custody. We have um, the teacher in custody, um, so the, and there are others, but I don't have the total number. Can you characterize the foot chase with Nairi? How long did that go on? I am told it was a, sh a short foot chase, so I, I don't think it went on too, too long. What were they wearing? I don't know what they were wearing. They're going to conduct their interviews, and then we'll be making arrangements to transfer. I don't think it'll take too long. Do you have any idea why uh, Bakhtuan is them? I can't. It, that's still that's still part of the investigation, so I don't. I can't comment on that. Um, I I know he was interviewed, but I would not want to comment on that right now. Well, certainly, hopefully, the investigators will find that out. They're, they're interviewing them now. I, I couldn't hear the. The San Jose location? Yeah, I, I cannot talk about those details now. Chair, I've talked about the internal investigation and checking out what, what's going to happen here. Have you made any changes yet? We have made a, n a number of changes, uh, and we will continue to make changes as we continue to assess not only this jail, but we're going to look at all of our jails that we run here in Orange County. We have about uh, close to 6,000 inmates on an average basis. And uh, in the past, we have done uh, what we call red team exercises, where we have 
a team go in and try and defeat security. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to do that. But we've made a number of changes so far to tighten up security specific to the Men's Central Jail. Changes Sheriff in personnel? Uh, we have made no changes in personnel at this time. Sir, from a personal standpoint, how, how did this affect you, uh, the escape and the search that went on? As, I, as I've said before, um, this is a sheriff's, one of a sheriff's worst nightmare. The other one is that one of your, one of your folks gets hurt out there. Uh, no, no sheriff wants to have an escape, especially as dangerous as these individuals were. Um, my fear was that someone in the community was going to get hurt uh, because they really had nothing to lose in my, in my mind. And that's why I considered them armed and dangerous and put that out to the public so quickly. Uh, I am very relieved that they are back in, in custody and can breathe a sigh of relief today, along with everybody else. Sheriff, sure, quickly on that, to your knowledge, nobody in the last eight days was hurt by these fugitives? Um, I, yeah, I have no knowledge that there were any serious injuries. That, you know, that will remain to be seen. We may have people come forward, um, but no, nobody, there was no serious injuries. My understanding is that uh, he was trying to conceal himself in the van, but he did not uh, try and resist or escape. Um, we'll find out more later. Um, I have my own thoughts, but I, I'd better have that confirmed. Do you know how many each of the remaining found in the van? Do you know how many bullets found in the van? There were some 380 rounds found in the van, but no weapon. You had said no changes in personnel. I understood that the captain of the jail was relieved of their duties. Are they reinstated or? The captain of the jail has not been relieved of his duties. Uh, no personnel action has been taken. Um, we certainly wouldn't do that uh, for any member of the department without conducting an investigation. But we're looking at everybody, so, um, you know, from the top down. But right, as of right now, no disciplinary, disciplinary action on anybody in the jail. A, a deputy, of, of, of obviously. No disciplinary action has been taken at this time. And when you talk about the security changes, I know you can't get into detail, but were these security changes made to different locations by themselves or with others? I can tell you they won't be together. <laughs> Sir, is, is baffling to the community how they were able to cut out of the um, wall right there, that metal? Like, uh, do you have any information on how they were able to obtain the tools to do that? That's part of. That's still part of the investigation. We um, we still don't know how those uh, tools, how they obtain those tools, and uh, they had to be very sharp cutting tools. If you look at the, you know, the rebar and 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 the rods, stainless steel rods that they had to, to cut through. Uh, so we're still working on. That's still part of the uh, escape investigation. I think I did a big whoop in the air, you know. Uh, I was, uh, you know, I, I've been getting phone calls. I've been joking that I, I, I really want a phone call at 2 o'clock in the morning now. And I don't usually say that. But I said, please call me at 2 o'clock in the morning and tell me you got him. But I got the call this morning, and uh, I was elated. All right. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for your questions. As you know, we try to provide you with the, the freshest, most up-to-date information. The sheriff, as well, we don't have a lot of the details. It's an ongoing investigation. The investigators are up in San Francisco. So again, uh, bear with us. I'll provide you another date and time for a media briefing where we can provide a lot of the details that you're looking for. But again, thanks for being here today. Do you think you'll get a run today? Probably not.